Okay, so what is a fundamentalist? And what is fundamentalism? Well, it gets a bit confusing because, well, it matters who you talk to. I mean, is it this? Or this? Or this? Or even this? Hey, let's get this figured out right now. Welcome back to Truth Unbound. I'm your host, Walter Swain. And just before we get into today's theme, two things real quick I want to ask of you. Would you like, subscribe, share, and follow this podcast and this channel, Truth Unbound? To learn more about God speaking into today's issues and dilemmas, Truth Unbound is where you want to be. And invite others to join in with us so that we together can find the answers God has for us in His Word. Secondly, my new book, To Be Clear, Proclaiming the Gospel in a Post-Truth World, is out. And you can get it in paperback and in Kindle format as well on Amazon. Also, you can get an autographed paperback copy of it uh, at tobeclearbook.com. That website is tobeclearbook.com. You will find out in the book, you'll find out what is behind the radical changes and challenges that are occurring in these recent times in science, the media, social media, the arts, and now even Christianity and the gospel. Get your copy today. Thank you so much. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so what is a fundamentalist or fundamentalism? Usually today, if the term fundamentalist is thrown at you, as a Christian, it's usually not in a friendly way. The term is defined usually by those who wish to define it in a negative light, and that's usually due to some bad past personal experience they've had with someone uh, that calls themselves a Christian or a fundamentalist, or they were told they were a fundamentalist, or in a church that's told to be fundamentalist. So we'll try to take apart the bad and good from this term, because in its actual meaning, it's really pretty plain and non-controversial, but you wouldn't know it by today's definitions that are thrown at it. So let's jump in and let's find out the truth. All right, so what do the dictionaries say? Well, they're not incredibly helpful, unfortunately, but they do help a little bit. So here's one from the CoBuild Advanced English Dictionary. It says, fundamentalism is the belief in the original form of a religion or theory without accepting any later ideas. And another says, religious beliefs based on a literal interpretation of the Bible regarded as fundamental to Christian faith and morals. Uh, it gives a second definition, the 20th century movement among some American Protestants based on these beliefs. And then it also says another meaning is that it is a strict adherence to or interpretation of a doctrine, set of principles, etc., as of a social, legal, political, or religious group or system. That's from the Webster's New World College Dictionary. Now, there's another one from the Collins English Dictionary, and it says the first meaning is Christianity, especially among uh, certain Protestant sects, the belief that every word of the Bible is divinely inspired and therefore true. It also gives a second definition saying Islam, a movement, favoring a strict observant of the teachings of the Quran and Islamic law. The third meaning it gives is strict adherence to the fundamental principles of any set of beliefs. Okay, that's fair enough. And then last but not least for definitions from dictionaries, from the Cambridge Dictionary, it says the belief in old and traditional forms of religion or the belief that what is written in a holy book, such as the Christian Bible, is completely true. Now, to understand what a term really means, as with any terminology it's used, you need to understand its original context, its original intention. It goes back to the early 20th century. Years of doctrinal drift in Protestant Christianity was finally facing some pushback from those Christian leaders, such as pastors and scholars and, and writers, and they finally felt there needed to be a line drawn in the sand. 
and to define who is actually following biblical Christian faith as it was founded by Christ and taught by the apostles after him. And what it had become as a liberal man-made religion unrecognizable to actual scripture and biblical church history. So they were trying to dis- define and to reaffirm what the historical Christian faith as originally founded was as opposed to the man-made religious uh, liberal Christianity that was surging uh, forward. Now the term fundamentalist began and is based on the original 12 volume set of 90 essays that were written by several uh, Christian, conservative Christian theological authors. And it was edited by many, but especially the prominent Christian pastor and preacher, R.A. Torrey. He became the editor of the essays when they were reprinted into a four-volume set in 1917. From 1910 to 1916, they were distributed free of charge to churches all across the U.S., thanks to a grant uh, from Milton and Lyman Stewart of the Union Oil Company. Before and continuing after World War I, the essays meticulously defended the true Christian faith against much of what was called German higher criticism, because it came from Germany, which was tearing down the divine inspiration and inerrancy of the scriptures, especially, and other doctrines. The essays also wrote in defense of not only inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible, but also the truthfulness of miracles, for instance, that miracles are possible and did happen, the substitutionary atonement of Jesus dying for our sins, the virgin birth of Jesus, and the resurrection, the literal bodily resurrection of Christ. It also was a response to the social gospel that much of Protestantism had become. The social gospel meant that good deeds and works, for instance, to help those who were suffering in poverty and other social maladies of that time, uh, but they were doing that without preaching or any emphasis at all on the gospel message to save the soul as well as help the body and the social situation. This meant that there needs to be and needed to be and still needs to be a calling out of liberal Christianity and a separation from them as churches and organizations that believed in the fundamentals of the faith, of the Christian faith. Now later on, closer to the period of World War II and after, there was a continuation of Christian fundamentalism, but some preferred to begin being called evangelicals, to soften it, uh, the label a little bit. Because to some of them, the term fundamentalist uh, had already begun uh, to carry kind of a negative impression with it. As we got to the 70s and forward, the term took on new vigor, especially among Baptists and especially in the South. As a refuge and strong tower, if you will, against all things socially and morally going downhill fast in the U.S., Eventually, uh, prominent evangelicals or fundamentalists, such as Jerry Falwell and the founding of the Moral Majority, uh, began to have some political clout, uh, which also became greater in fundamentalism. Later on, in about the late 70s and early 80s, the term fundamentalist also began to be used with Islamic terrorists because they were fanatical, like many Christians, especially Baptist fundamentalists in the world's eyes and in the media's eyes especially, about their own Islamic beliefs and terrorizing people across the globe. And so the same term began to be used, crossway between Christian fundamentalists and Islamic fundamentalists. Now, it was at this point, during this period, this later period in the timeline, closer to us, that innumerable groups that seemingly were either called or self-identified as being believing in basic historical Christianity were called out as fundamentalist or labeled as fundamentalist. A prime example of this would be Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka, Kansas, famous for its protests at soldiers' funerals and their hate and racist speeches and materials and websites. Uh, due to these splinter and extremist groups saying they were proudly fundamentalist, which couldn't be farther from the truth or reality of the original meaning of the term, now anyone who says they believe the Bible as literal and want to simply uphold and defend biblical faith and values because of those extremist edge groups that call themselves Christian fundamentalists, the rest of us are thrown in with them and with the white uh, supremacists and racists and hate mongers and more. 
And this is very unfortunate because it's not the true meaning of the term fundamentalist. And then add to this that there are some who call themselves Christians who reject being called a fundamentalist due to bad personal experiences, perceived or real, in their past with a a church or a church leader that either called themselves fundamentalist or were identified as fundamentalist in recent years as well due to people like Josh Harris, Gungor, Bart Campolo, Hillsong's Marty Sampson, Paul Maxwell most recently, and others. It has become fashionable to call out Christianity as false and call it as fundamentalism all the time by these former leaders and influencers in American Christianity. They have and will call out Christian fundamentalism as the thing that destroyed their lives. In the end, though I believe that much of their hurt and doubt is very real and has happened, and I pray and hope for their healing, and I pray for their return to Jesus, because much of what they are rejecting and inviting others to join walking away from is not the God, Jesus, or faith that really exists as really revealed in the scriptures. So what's the truth now in these 2020s, if you will, as far as fundamentalist or fundamentalism? Well, let me give these following suggestions based upon God's word. First, follow the Jesus that is, and the faith that God truly established is plainly described in the Bible, and not as others paint Jesus or the biblical Christian faith to be. Second, be personally engaged in a local church that is faithful to God, his word, and yes, the plain fundamental doctrines as God established them to be in his word. Third, make sure that the church you go to not only believes as Christ wants us to believe, but also loves as Christ wants us to love at the same time without compromising his truth to do so. Fourth, it's okay to doubt, and it's okay to ask questions, and to learn what God says and does. It's a lifelong process. Look at men and women, for instance, in the Bible, like David, Hannah, Esther, Job, Paul, the 12 disciples themselves, and on and on goes the list of those who believed in God by faith, but also were free to tell God how they truly felt about some things and the doubts they had and the questions, the things they wondered about, yet still not abandoning that faith or walking away from God. Fifth, it's also okay okay to believe in the fundamental core doctrines of the faith and say so and defend them clearly but compassionately and to call out doctrinal error when necessary. So often I refer to some of these following verses, and I will continue to do so because they really succinctly tell us from God's word itself, from these authors, what we are to do in the faith. For instance, in Jude, verses 3 and 4, he says, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 through 26, and he said this, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. And then lastly, again, I revert back to Jude. At the end of the letter, he says, Have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. In the plain original meaning of the term fundamentalist and fundamentalism, you are simply someone who understands, believes in, and defends the fundamental core basic doctrines of the Christian faith as God gave them to us. So in the end, don't be labeled by others. Don't accept those labels, but seek only what God and who God calls you to be and the label that God gives you as his child. 
feel for those who've had a negative experience in church or Christianity, but don't identify the failures of even Christian people with God and what he has established. And lastly, don't be labeled by others. Don't accept their labels, but seek only the label that God gives you as his child. Feel for those who have had a negative experience in their church or in their form of Christianity, but don't identify the failures of even Christian people that have caused their hurt and pain with the true God and what he has established as the faith and that are fundamental core beliefs. If someone calls you a fundamentalist simply and only because you believe in the Bible and believe in God and follow Jesus and try to live out your faith in a loving and yet principled way based on God's word, then so be it. Say thank you. (laughs) And then invite them to Jesus or maybe invite them to your church or to have a cup of coffee and talk about these things. Be a friend to them, demonstrating naturally how faith and truth and love in Christ all is truly shown, even as a Christian, as a Christ follower, and yes, even as a fundamentalist. Let me end this with a personal note. I know fundamentalism because I grew up in it and am still in it. And as I showed before, I mean that by the original understanding of the term. I am also a Baptist, an independent Baptist, actually. And yes, I'm from the South and still live and minister in the South. I have seen the abuses and legalism of extreme wings of fundamentalist Baptists, especially and of all fundamentalists, all stripes and all types of fundamentalists, and frankly disliked it and separated myself from it and still do. But independent fundamental Baptist neighbors invited my mom to church and me. They shared the good news of Jesus Christ with me. They led me to Jesus. They taught me the Bible. They loved my mom, who was in an abusive marriage and gave her dutiful employment for many, many years, never demanded more than she could give in her and even my situation at home. These fundamentalists taught me freedom in Christ as well as responsibility and to love in Christ. I have served alongside of countless fundamentalists who have served God faithfully and defended and still defend his truth and love people as they are and to lead them to Jesus. So I remained a fundamentalist Christian because I believe in the fundamentals of the faith as once delivered to all of us believers in the word of God. And I will continue to be. I live to make disciples of Jesus who will make disciples of Jesus, who will exalt Christ and do the same for him and believe in the fundamentals of the faith and defend them and preach them and teach them. So it's really okay to be a fundamentalist of the Christian faith, and you don't have to be angry or hateful about it. Thank you for joining us again. And listen, if you have any questions, please message me through the Truth Unbound Facebook page or email me at info at truthunbound.org. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. I really appreciate it. It gets us out there to others. And even comment and share this with others today through a text or on Facebook or however you want to do it. Hey, be encouraged. And if you follow Jesus, you'll always follow the truth. 